This is the Power of Team America podcast, and today we've got U.S. national team coach and Browns gym owner, Jim Brown. We talk about his background getting involved in powerlifting in the 1980s, coaching tons of U.S. national teams over the years, and we look forward to the upcoming national championship in Scottsdale, where Jim and a big squad of Brown gym lifters will be competing. Before we start, make sure you tune in to the grand finale of our national championship, Sub Junior, Junior Masters, and Equip Nationals starting June 2nd. Every session is stacked with talent, loaded battles, and spectacular solo performances all the way through for all three days. The live stream is up on our website under live events, and we'll post a link in our Instagram story at powerlifting underscore America. Thank you to SPD and Alenko for the continued partnership with Powerlifting America. If you're looking to compete in drug tests of powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or you want to compete with the best in the world, make sure to go to powerlifting-america.com and become a member. Now let's get to this interview with U.S. National Team Coach Jim Brown. What's up? I got U.S. National Team Coach and owner of Brown's Gym, Jim Brown. <laughs> How are we doing? <laughs> so say that five times fast. Let's <laughs> <laughs> <Just> not. <laughs> you don't spell your first name G-Y-M, do you? No, but you're not the first person to tell me it's you know, it's a play on words that it should be Jim Brown's gym <laughs> instead of Brown's gym. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so sometimes I ask you now, how's Jim doing? Not the gym. How is your husband, Jim? Doing? Other gym. <laughs> <laughs> Not Brown's gym. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. But yeah, how's it going, man? How are things going? Good. We're getting close to nationals. Uh, what's today? Monday. So we leave uh, Wednesday for Scottsdale. Yeah, it's a couple yeah. days away. Same here, yeah. man. I can't wait yeah. to see you guys. Yeah, we're ready. It's going to be a blast. It's a hell of a meet. This is the most fun meet. <clears throat> yes. Last year, um, I met you at at this same competition in Orlando, but for that one, you were just, you, I think, what, you just came down for the meeting and then left? Is that right? We literally landed in the airport to go to the NGB meeting, and the moment the meeting was done, we hopped back on a plane and flew back home. Wow. I don't, even, I don't think I was gone shit i don't think i was gone 12 hours maybe that's 14 a, hours yeah that's dedication right there i didn't know if my wife missed me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she didn't notice she didn't notice you were gone <laughs> but yeah so um let's start off by talking about a little bit of current events things okay. been happening around the world of powerlifting um so first is um you know everyone's talking about sheffield they just announced i think a couple of days ago sheffield 2024 the prize money has gone up like 100 grand ish i haven't done the math i'm not good holy cow really yeah and and then uh, they announced the date february 10th the day before the super bowl hopefully the chiefs will be repeating back-to-back <laughs> super bowl champs and uh um, be those stinking vikings i know that no nah, no nah. <laughs> but, but yeah so what did you watch what's your take overall on sheffield how what well, do you think about um it? i got a couple things to say on that um yeah. so I think it's the best show powerlifting has ever put on. Regardless of who did it, I think it's the best show ever put on. Um, I don't think I cared too much for how they judged who the winner of the of the event was. Um, yeah, the way they did the rules to that, it was kind of set up so that the less popular weight classes. So the, what I, let me rephrase that. The most populated classes have already had the world record numbers driven the highest. Yeah. So the chances of breaking a world record and, and then having a good payday at the end of that were not very good for those middle weight classes. Yeah. The, the lowest weight class, the highest weight class, which have the least number of people in general population in those weight classes had the highest chances of, of, of setting those records. Yeah. And that's the way it turned out to go. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that part is... A little bit of a downfall to Sheffield, but that's it. That's all I got bad to say about the Sheffield. That's it. The rest of it was a phenomenal show. Um, the IPF has really done some really cool things here going on in the last couple of years. Um, 2022 went to Denmark for the Open World Championships. Yeah. Equipped to Open World Championships. And that's the first time in my entire career, and I've been doing this over 40 years now, that's the first time in my entire career I felt like this was the stage and this was the show we all dreamed of having. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the warm-up area, no countries had to share a rack with each other. Yeah. If you're the only representative in that weight class from your country, you didn't share a rack with anybody. We came back from the squat attempts to find the rack 
reassembled as a bench press, vacuumed, the weights all put away, the bar set up. They took care of us. It was, it was unbelievable way they took care of us for that. Wow. Uh, squat bench and deadlift were all set up that way. We never, we never tore down a rack. We never tore down the bars when we were done. It was every time we came back, the stuff was vacuumed. It was it was phenomenal the way they took care of us. Wow. So I think the IPF is finally. I shouldn't say finally. I should say it has matured into that level of being a world class event now when we go. Yeah. Instead of a a hyped up version of, you know, something I did in my gym. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just like a bigger version of the same powerlifting right. format that we've it wasn't seen. That. It, was, it, was, it was a world-class event. And then to see the Sheffield follow that and to see they made it even a bigger event out of it. Yeah. I think the IPF's got something going right here. And I think uh, SBD and Sheffield and everybody responsible for pulling it off really – they knocked it out of the park. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's got the, it's got the power of team world buzzing and I think it's yeah. Uh, yeah. leveled us up a, another notch. And I mean, to add oh, another what do you do in the sport. Yeah. We all dreamed about getting paid. Somebody actually did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, Zeus got a bag out of it. I mean, that was awesome. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Super yeah. cool to see. I mean, he, uh, he came home and he bought a truck you know and he was well, the rest he, of us did that you know and no one else i mean that that truck i mean i don't know if he had his sheffield money by then or not but i mean it's like <laughs> that's cool man he was driving i think like a smaller little suv or a, a even a car i can't remember first of all that's funny to get jesus into that <laughs> exactly it's I hope about he bought a time. Full-size pickup. <laughs> yeah it's about time i think he bought a full-size chevy i can't remember the brand but yeah it was pretty sweet Good. pretty cool to see you know yep. um from a from a kid from a small town in texas you know humble very very humble roots yeah to being on the biggest stage putting on a performance like that and then yep. and then go home and be able to buy a truck off of it or <laughs> well you know he earns his money too he's a coach and he right. does other things right. But, right. but yeah that's pretty cool um all right other topics um current events topics um happening so one we've seen so far in 2023, the implementation of the new bench press rules. What's your take on that? I'm happy to see it. Um, it some of the people had, had had such tremendous mobility in their backs to get that bar. So the bar movement was, you know, a couple inches. Maybe some of them were less. Yeah. Um, some of them, frankly, were not even bending their elbows. Yeah. They, yeah, they're just lowering your shoulders. They've lowered the weight. <laughs> Never yeah. bent the elbows. Um, God bless them; they could do it, but it, but it was definitely not bench pressing anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm glad to see that that rule come into effect. Hard rule to judge, but yeah. they're getting it down. They're getting it figured out. Yeah, I think it'll take time. You got to create a standard. I mean, it's like squat depth. If you look across different federations, it's 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 judged a little bit that different. Varies a little bit. Yep. And there's just that little bit of like, well, you know, it's kind of adds in this, this wrinkle of gamesmanship where it's like, you need to know how the refs are calling it on the day and you need to right. be able to adapt. And it's right. a similar thing with bench. I mean, before with bench, it was all about how long is the pause going to be, you know? And like, that was the variable that, you know, oh shit, they're giving really long pauses. So everyone's benches kind of went down a little bit or, or right. they're using this bench pad versus that bench pad. I got an extra five or six kilos off, off that one, but this yes. one really tanks my bench. So now the elbow depth is, is, is another, is another wrinkle that you got to pay attention to. How have you, I'm a Brown calling me. All right. Want to answer? No. Okay. <laughs> you can answer to, Hey, say hi to power to America podcast. <laughs> okay. Hey, I'm on the podcast. Say hello. No, don't say that. <laughs> You're on the podcast, Janelle. You're on the podcast now. I'll call you back in a little while. Sorry. All right. All right, bye. You can never go on Do Not Disturb. You're you're a business owner, you know. I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
But um, yeah, so have you had to coach anyone who had to make adjustments? Have you had to make any adjustments or Janelle? I mean, you, Janelle's got long arms. I don't think it affects her, but. No, uh, I have not. Uh, none of my lifters were, were pushing that rule on a bench press that far that we had to work. Um, maybe Casey Hill, we might've had to alter hers a little bit. Um, but I think we brought her in half a finger width maybe. And we were inside the rules. It wasn't a big deal. Okay. But again, okay, cool. she's an ex gymnast, an ex diver. Mm. Thing, she had that back mobility to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so thinking, okay, then uh, if you haven't had to have too much uh, coaching around that yet, but has it been in the past that you would try to coach or give people drills to get a little more thoracic mobility to try to get that chest up well, a little I bit never higher? I was a big fan of that, of, of doing that because it, it, that's not free poundage. You know, if say it gave you, say it gave you 50 pounds on your bench. It does so much damage to the low back that you're going to lose that 50 pounds off the deadlift. You might lose a hundred off of your deadlift capability. Yeah. Uh, in the end, the contest is won by total, not by bench press. Yeah. So I never, I never tried to play with that too much just because I knew the deadlift was worth more than the bench press. Okay. And from a guy who has very short arms, who can bench well and can't deadlift worth a damn, I can tell you a deadlift would be nice to have. <laughs> <laughs> Screw the bench. I need a deadlift. Craig Terry was my best competitor ever. Um, Craig Terry and I probably took the American record away from each other on a squat a half a dozen times. We'd go to bench press. I'd out bench Craig by 100 pounds. If, if God gave him a bench press shirt himself, I was still going to beat him by 100 pounds on a bench. And as soon as that bar hit the ground, he's going to out deadlift me by 180 pounds. Yep. It didn't matter. <laughs> yep. The big deadlifter always has the final say, right? Always has the final say. Yep. For sure. All so right. I well, was always, I was always a fan of, of the total. Okay. All right. So... All right. Well, um, another topic uh, that was buzzing. I think it's, I think people aren't talking about it as much because I think it was a lot of hot air people, you know, a lot of haters trying to make something out of nothing, but um, they're going to revisit the sumo deadlift rules they're, They brought it up on a, on the topic uh, in Malta at the meeting. It's on the topic list um, of, as to, you know, they want to revisit it, whatever that means. But um from my understanding, there's not going to be any changes or anything. They're just going to talk about it. So what, what do you think about sumo and what would you change? What, what kind of rules would you want to, want to see, you know, implemented? Um, I yeah, don't which... see them taking the sumo deadlift away from, from powerlifting. Um, and frankly, if they do, I'm going to quit. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> 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 clean while they're doing this. Um, I find conventional deadlift for myself to be so injurious that if, if they, if they took the sumo away, I, I would just retire. I'm done. Mm -hmm. um, it's not worth getting hurt over. Um, but I don't see him doing that. I don't think that's the way this is going to go. No. I do think there are some people who have set up, if you took a vertical line from the center of the bar straight down, they've got their, shins up against the bar tight and they're turned out so hard that the tips of their toes are actually out beyond the inside edge of the plate mm -hmm. so to me they've, they've crossed the line on on legal positioning okay i mean on a squat we have to be able to be inside we can't put our hands on the, on the weights yeah that's outside of the boundaries yeah we have a maximum bench width yeah i think that should be applied to uh, the, the, the sumo deadlift, I do think that they've gone, gone too far with how far they're getting a toe beyond the plates. I think if their toes are inside the plates, I think we're okay. Yeah. Um, easy to judge too, right? Yeah. yeah I, I saw, yeah, again, yeah, that'd be easy to judge because the, you have literally have the edge of the plates to know that, Hey, you're outside the boundaries of, of legal here. Yeah. Um, so I do think that, 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 will happen i have seen some injuries not not real common but i've seen some real bad ones we did a we did a uh, a north american championship in 
might have been a Pan Am's games here. I can't remember. In Miami, in Ecuador was there. And one of the Ecuadorian lifters, second attempt deadlift, sets it down on his toes. Mm. And he didn't set it down. He, boom, on a part. Yeah. And when he come waddling off the stage, the blood was coming up out of the top of his shoe. Oh, shit. So the Ecuadorians, they are, you like this story. The Ecuadorians are paid professional weightlifters. Mm -hmm. This is their job. They don't win. They get fired. Mm. They're going to pull a shoe off. I'm telling them, no, 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 no. Don't take that off. Because once you, you know, the shoe is acting as a tourniquet right now. Don't take that off. So I got him convinced to leave the shoe on him. Well, the U.S. lifter goes out, puts up a third attempt to, to make that Ecuadorian go to second place. Oh, shit. And a little bugger went out and pulled a third attempt and won. Oh, my God. The blood is pouring out of the top of his shoe. Uh, we sent him to the hospital. When he came back from the hospital, he came back minus his toes. Oh, he man. amputated his own toes on that second attempt. Wow. And then pull the third attempt. <laughs> oh my good God. That's crazy. Yeah. So like there has said, there's been a lot in the line like that, that have been, been bad. Uh, that I think could be eliminated if we just came back inside of the plates. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good point. I, I, I have heard rumors, whispers, whatever, that it's a safety, you know, that what they're interested in why bringing this up is not banning sumo. Like everyone tried to yeah. blow that way out of proportion, but that they're, it's a safety thing that there's, you know, and we're looking out for athlete safety. Plus it disrupts the meat. You know, you got blood everywhere and there's all kinds of stuff. Apparently there were a lot of issues with that at some recent right. competitions. Right. So, you know, for, for most lifters today, too young to remember when bloodborne pathogens was a real problem in power. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, the reason we wear high socks is we couldn't get blood on the bar from, from our shins getting scraped up. Yeah. And you know, and so I'm talking about a time back in the um, late 80s, 90s, when when AIDS was a problem. Yeah. And everybody was scared to death of this. And so they, they call it bloodborne pathogens is a nice way to put it. Yeah. But they'd have to shut the contest down. Now you got to have to have somebody who's got to clean that. So now you have somebody exposed to that blood to clean it. They've disinfected the bar. Now the bar is wet. Now they got to give it X number amount of time for that bar to dry before the next lifter can go. Yeah. So in trying to make a great show, shutting the show down to clean blood off the bar or blood off the floor is, <laughs> is not yeah. ideal. So yeah. I, I think in the IPF's attempt to put on a great show, I think they kind of have to do something to make sure we don't have that, that situation. That's a good point for sure. And <clears throat> That's what people I don't think we're thinking about when they see all this hoopla around sumo is going to get banned. The IPF is banning sumo. Um, no, well, there's actually like legit. I'm thinking, I get short arms. I don't want to do conventional. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, man. Me too. I mean, I got long arms and I still want to do sumo anyway. I mean, it's just, yeah. uh, you know, like you said, with the back stuff, yeah. um, you know, so it's, it's necessary. I hope, I, I mean, I think we're, pretty confident they're not going to ban sumo, but, but it, there are other things around the sumo deadlift that maybe people weren't thinking about. And one of them is this safety issue with the toes. Yeah. So, so and that you've would seen be my it. guess of what they're, what they're going to do. Yeah. All right. All right. So right now we're a week out from Scottsdale masters nationals. Um, you're going to be lifting, uh, in the equipped division, right? Yes. Is that right. Yes. And so, yeah, you're like six days out a week from yesterday. Um, how's your training going? <laughs> Technically, I'm four because I have to qualify too. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Yeah, you're doing yeah. the last chance qualifier. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Maybe I'll be refing that session. <laughs> See how you long I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna do bar, bar, bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Better get that elbow depth. <laughs> no problem. We're good. So, um, so yeah, how is how is your training been going headed into well, this comp? I didn't have any plans on doing this. Um, I had my tricep was torn off, um, uh, March 2nd, 3rd date, something like that, or I ripped it off and, uh, March 22nd, I had, had it reattached, uh, I had huge bone spurs taken off, you know, two of them take off the backside of my elbow. Um, still got, I don't know if you can see, I got a pretty good scar in the back of it yet. Yeah. Uh, I, by the time we get to nationals, I'm only going to be 
72 days out post-op from, from surgery. Wow. And I hadn't been able to train for a couple months prior to that because the elbow hurt so bad to begin with before it probably tore off. Um, so I don't have any training on me this year. So I realized about four weeks out from the deadline for, for entering nationals, or maybe less, maybe a week out from the deadline, I realized there was nobody in the 93 kilo equipped division. So I knew if I went in, I, I knew I could get in and do something minimal. Um, I didn't know I would be unopposed, but I knew if I went in and did something minimal, 600 kilos for a total or something, uh, I didn't think anybody would be would push me too hard beyond that to, to make a qualifier. So I signed up. Um, training's been a little bit rough. I, I pulled my hamstring twice in the last two weeks. Mm. Um, so I've re I, I realized after all the nominations were turned in that I am unopposed. Okay. So I, I reduced my my standard of what I'm gonna try to, to hit there. I'm only gonna go 400, 450 kilos, something like that. I'm on a pose. There's no sense me pushing it. Yeah. But I already started my training for the world championships two weeks ago. Okay. So I just dropped my idea of running a mesocycle to nationals and started a long-term mesocycle going to, to nationals or uh, to the world championships. All right. So when they see me there, that that's when they want to be worried. <laughs> All right. So yeah, look out world. I'm Jim coming. Brown's coming. Uh, I'm looking for 800 kilos again. Um, I'm only going to be 192 pounds, 193 pounds. I'm giving up a lot of body weight, but I, I'm still going to hit an 800 kilo there. Okay. So you're, so you're in the 93s, but you're coming in almost 10 pounds under over oh, 10 pounds. Almost, almost 12. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. So yeah, you're giving up a lot of weight. So I just can't hold the body size anymore. Mm -hmm. What age category are you in? Uh, I'm in a 50 to 59. So M2. Yeah. Much closer to 60. <laughs> nice. M2 going on M3, huh? Yeah. Pretty close. Yep. Nice. Well, that'll be a fun, that the M2s are pretty stacked at worlds. So like, that'll be a fun one. You'll have it. You'll actually have some good competition there. The 93s are always stacked good anyway. So yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Is that Dave Rick's weight class? It is, but David hasn't done equipped in a number of years. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're on the equip side. Yeah. So, yeah, that'll be exciting. So you'll be going to Mongolia, huh? Yes. yes. Well, you have to go anyway. So that was <laughs> I was already going since I'm coaching. It's like, man, I don't want to be standing on the sidelines here and watch somebody else go compete for the United States with a half-ass total when I knew I could go in and win this thing. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. I have I'm to coach somebody to a half ass total that I know I can win. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's great, man. Uh, Masters team head coach will be representing on the platform as well. Yep. Um, all right. So let's get a little bit of your backstory here. Not we don't want to go into too much detail because um, you know, Brown's gym has a podcast that people can go and listen to, and they can hear a lot about the origin stories of you and Janelle talking back and forth and you uh, telling stories in your bunker home gym and all this. So <laughs> definitely go check that out, but just give us, you know, how long have you been involved in powerlifting? Uh, I have been, I did my first contest 1984. Wow. So it's been, yeah, some, so been a minute. 39 right. years in, in competition. Damn. That is a while. That's, this is my first competition I'm entering that I didn't enter the open as well. Oh, really? This is the first time you've entered as a master. First time I've not entered open. Wow. Exciting. Cool. New leaf. Yes. That's good. Next year I will. Those you next year going to enter open. Next year I'll enter open. <laughs> okay. And equipped. I can do, I can do raw or equipped. Yeah. What, what can you, what do you think you could total by next year in, in raw? Uh, I can, it depends on how the bench goes. The bench is my real challenge right now. Yeah. With the um, tricep. Well, even before that, my bench had dropped off shit, almost a hundred pounds over the last five, six years. Okay. And it, it never came back. Yeah. So apparently this old age thing is real and it's actually it's a real thing. To me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm disappointed that it's going to happen to me. Well, don't, it's don't go to other people. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't feel too bad. Those those ninety threes in the open are crazy. I mean, benching yeah. in the you know, you know uh, Keiko's benching like five thirty or something crazy. Uh, his best raw is better than my best equipped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it'll be fun to go out there and just be on the you know go head to head with those guys and uh, yeah. show them up a little bit. I mean, show show them how the old guys can do it. You know, you still got a thing or two. They can learn a few tricks. I can still go in and aggravate them. <laughs> get, get in their head a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Uh, and then on the equip side too, um, I think, you know, you, I don't know who's in the 93s, but, um, you, you know, you, you definitely have a shot probably there in open. Well, M1 is still Dale McLaren who will still do opens and Dale's Dale's always a good challenge. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dale's probably 10, 15 years younger than me, I think. And, and he's, um, he's still coming along, still getting better. Yeah. Stop yawning. Am I boring you? No, no, sorry, dude. This I is like my <laughs> nothing to do with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm burning the candle at both ends over here. <laughs> I try to cover it up. Um, no, no, uh, I, I'm I'm pumped to see you. I I think it, I think it'll be exciting to see you back in the sport. Of actually, I mean, you're in the sport in terms of coaching, but I want to see you on the platform lifting. I think I'm you, I'm a little embarrassed for for this contest that the going into way yeah to earn this the way I'm gonna earn it I'm embarrassed to do, yeah. uh, it's not my doing the you know it's not my fault nobody else showed up to make me have to push it, um, yeah. if I had to push it I would have, I mean in training three weeks ago I hit a, five eighty four easy triple, um, straps down loose knee wraps, probably could have made a set of ten with it, yeah. Um, so the squat is there. Yeah. And then I tweaked the hamstring, you know, a couple of days later on a warm up squat. I mean, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. 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 yeah uh, I mean, it's hard when you're so strong as you are and you've, you've, you've built this reservoir of strength, you know, you can squat these kind of weights. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to be like, but yes, I can, but also, I'm not in the best shape right now. I should right. probably build up right. to get right. back up to that. Even though I can do it if my life depended on it, doesn't mean I should be, you know. So. And the moment doesn't call for it. Exactly. So. so, and you only have so many of those big lifts in the tank. So you can't just go use, use them up for no reason. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So you said you've been, in, you've been in the sport for damn near 40 years. Um, right. How long have you had Brown's gym? Uh, 30. 30 says uh february 14th of this year we were <laughs> you got the shirt on 30th anniversary <laughs> right it's the yeah, 30th february anniversary 14th of this year was our 30 year anniversary yeah that's awesome man that's so cool and what was the first uh what was your first competition then what was it called and what it was, was it actually like? called the north american powerlifting championship but it was an adfpa one okay so it was only held 45 minutes from my house okay uh, it was in hanover pennsylvania and you saw, how did you know to sign up for this? Um, Cuck's fitness store used to have, you know, all the stuff for, for powerlifting and, and you could get down there and you'd have powerlifting USA magazines on the shelf, which uh -huh. was your only source of information whatsoever in the world for, for powerlifting information. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure I bought a magazine. I'm sure I must have bought a subscription to it. Um, and funny thing, Powerlifting USA used to run these deals for, uh, like, they give you like two year membership for for one year's price or something like that. And I bought one every time they offered it. Uh -huh. They probably still owe me twenty years worth of subscriptions, even though they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> but and you used then... to, have to go to that, and that's where you'd, there'd be a list in the back of all the the contests in the United States to, to go to. Okay. They have your rankings. Um, and you used to have to wait a whole year for your weight class to come up in the rankings. Okay. So they have a top 100 page every month. So you had to wait a whole year for your, your weight class to come back. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Used to be, you know, you, you, as soon as you got it, cause you knew your month was coming up and you flipped to it and you, you looked down through the list to find out and say, like, who I made the top 100 on number 88. Yeah. Look at the difference between 88 and first, like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Comparison's a thief of joy for sure. You know, yes. they put it, yeah. lay it all out for you like that. The numbers don't lie really. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, 
people don't realize how hard it is to, you know, they don't get to see those comparisons now. Um, it was exciting to, to, go, to go find it. Hey, I cracked the top 100, you know? Yeah. And you're thinking about the United States because it was called Power Up in USA. Yeah. So, hey, I finally made the top 100 in the United States in my weight class. Yeah. That's cool, man. Uh, I, I actually didn't get to see any of those magazines when I was out at your place. Uh, uh, I got to take a look at those next time. So I'm a magazine so I guy. Don't have, I never have any magazines in the gym. I never have had. Uh -huh. um, even when I first started out, like I don't, there's not a bodybuilding magazine to be found on my gym. There's nothing. Okay. Um, and I did that on purpose. I did that because so much of that stuff was in my, in my eyes is false advertising. Yeah. Yeah, you got guys in there telling them, you know, how they got big and, you know, this was my workout program. I and mean, you know, the workout program is something they did 20 years ago. Yeah. And, but they didn't give you the recipe of, of drug use they had to go with it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then you just felt like a schmuck because you couldn't do any of those things and have the same result. Yeah. So I never, I mean, cared. you have an interesting story about that, right? I mean, your first wasn't the first thing that you did in like uh, the fitness world, a bodybuilding competition. I didn't actually ever compete in one. I thought I wanted to, and I trained, you know, that's what I trained for since I'm 11 years old. Uh -huh. And when I was 18, I went to, there was a Mr. Teenage Bodybuilding show and, and I went to go see this thing. And I thought these are guys my age. I get to go compare, you know, how I am against them, you know, not competing, but just see how I, how I stood up to it. And I, as soon as I see these guys, like they're enormous. Yeah. And um, my thought process was like, well, how old were you guys when you started? Because I started when I was 11. Yeah. I got seven years and a bust of my ass already. And you guys are enormous. You know, this is the thought process I got going on. Yeah. So I walked backstage and I asked one of the guys, like, how long have you been training? And the guy I talked to says, man, I've been training almost a year now. Oh, shit. Yeah. And I was, I was absolutely devastated when he told me that. At that point, that was that's when I realized what, what the, the drugs were about. Yeah. And I was so disgusted. I quit lifting altogether. Um, and I'd quit for some time. And then I saw an ad for in the newspaper for, for the very first ever. I keep saying it's the first ever. It might actually be the second national championship for American drug free powerlifting association. And it was going to be right in Wilkes-Barre, which is, you know, 40 minutes from my house. Yeah. Um, you know, the thing is in my backyard. I have no idea what power up thing is, but I go to it anyway. I get my ass right in a front row. Stage is about four feet high. So you're already sitting looking straight up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like right against the stage. And I and it happened to be this the last day. So it was all the big guys. You know, the, the 242s, 275s, the super heavyweights. And I fell in love with it right then and there. Yeah. That's all I've done since then is this powerful thing. That's amazing. Yeah. What a, what, I mean, in the, you think that was in that uh, same magazine that you saw that? Oh, you said it was in the newspaper. That was in the newspaper. Yeah. 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 Wow. Just imagine you didn't see that newspaper that day. Yeah. I would have missed it. Yeah. I mean, who knows what, where we would be, we'd be all in, in different places right now. Yeah, absolutely. That's wild to think, man, how yep. one little thing like that could change everything, you know? Uh, and, uh, you know, in my career, um, we're nearly 80,000 people have run through my gym. Wow. So, you know, if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't have built this. There's, there's 80,000 lives I wouldn't have touched. Yeah. It wouldn't have been for that. Crazy to think, man. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy to think how we all end up where we are on this crazy journey. Yep. Um, what was the first international competition that you went to? So I didn't do my first international meet until uh, El Dorado in Puerto Rico in 2000. I'm going to get the year wrong. Five, 2006, in one okay. of those years. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe two, I'm, I think in 2005. And I did not earn a spot for that. Janelle did. Okay. Um, she had won a spot won that spot being second at the national championship. Um, I, I, I don't even think I competed in the national championship that year. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I pretty much rode Janelle's coattail in. In powerlifting? <laughs> well, well to, to that particular meet. Yeah. Uh, 
they only had four men on the entire team for the United States for that meet. Okay. And they only had three if I wouldn't have went. All right. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so tell us, yeah, what happened to get you, get you roped into competing on that one? Robert Keller calls me. You know, it's, they were supposed to leave that week to go down to, to nationals or to, to North Americans. And he says, hey, bring your lifting equipment. Robert, I'm not even working. I'm not even lifting at all. Like, you know, at that time I was racing. So oh, I was yeah, my late models and that's what, I'm, that's what I was doing. And he says, well, bring your stuff. I, said, well, I haven't even worked out, man. Like, bring your stuff. So I went down and I hadn't seen an international meet before. And I did not know, like they played the national anthem for you if you won. Yeah. So Chanel wins that day. It's the first day and she's one of the lightest weight classes so she's one of the first ones to come up for them to play the national anthem and you know she wins and they're going to play the national anthem for her and i thought to myself man if there was anything i was willing to die for it'd be willing to experience that wow and i come out i can't remember if it was the next day or two days later and i went nine for nine won the damn thing and one best lifter wow yeah yeah. And you got the national anthem. Got the national anthem. That's got to stand cool. next to Brad Gillingham on, on the podium, you know, on, you know, when we all get our team pictures together. Like it was awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that, that's the thing I think oh, that separates international competition yeah. from national is like that country element of you're representing your country, you're representing the United yeah. States and the adds that extra bit of pride behind it, yeah. you know? And you make, you make great friendships with those with those people. Uh, Raymond Burgos from Puerto Rico, I'm still friends with to this day. Yeah. Uh, when his daughter was born, I sent him uh, a silver spoon with his daughter's name engraved on it from Tiffany's. Wow. I want to make sure she was born with a silver spoon. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, this is that that's the community. I mean, and those are the super, you know. Um, the great friendships and the stories that you gain from these international experiences. I mean, of course we do it at at nationals too. We hang out, we have fun, everything like that. It's it's a whole different level on the international stuff because you have to work so hard to get there, to go back, to see those people. Yeah. Like one of the reasons I want to go to Mongolia is to go see Mario Schnur. Yeah. Germany. Mm -hmm. I can't understand half of what Mario says, but we drink, we drink well together anyway. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Those Germans can drink some beer. It's a little spooky to drink with Mario. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. Well, that's cool, man. I'm um, glad to get you know a little bit of your backstory here. So, like for people who are on one of these teams that you're coaching, I mean, you're the, you're the uh, the head coach of the Masters team headed to Mongolia, um, which makes you also the head coach of the Masters team that'll be headed to the Cayman Islands. Um, so, who's who's your assistant coach? Uh, so this, this year's a little bit different. So it's actually um, Bill Helmick, our co-head coaching uh-huh. um, the world team. Bill has done has handled that team for a number of years. Yeah. And um, he's not ready to step down from that yet. And frankly, I don't really want him to. Um, he's had some health issues. So I'm, I'm going along with Bill to, to make sure the workload's not too hard. Um, Bill's still a phenomenal coach, and I hope he stays there as long as he, his health holds up to, to do so. Yeah. Uh, Tam, uh, Tamara Lopez. Um, Lopes. Lopes. Yeah. I always say that wrong. I'm sorry, yeah, Tam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, T- uh, Tamara Lopes is going with us, and she's going in as the assistant coach this year. Okay. So I believe in, you know, we've, we've always taken the North American teams, and we've tried to take the second place from Nationals as the offering to go to North Americans. Yeah. And the idea of that has always been to help us develop the next, the next lifter who's going to go to Worlds. Mm-hmm. So number one's going to Worlds. Number two is going to uh, the NAPFs to get their international experience so that when they get to the Worlds, they know what to expect. They know what to do. They know how to act when they get there. Yeah. Um, they know the timing of things and, and they find out what it's like to lift in, in different countries and it's not as high a level um production or facility yeah all, all of those all of the above on that it might yeah. be hot as hell when you get there 
um, you know, the air conditioning is not what you're up to. They get a chance to experience that stuff before they get to the world championships and weren't really ready for that. Yeah, exactly. So we're doing the same thing with the coaching staff this year. So this year, the assistant coaches to the world teams are coaching the NAPF teams to get their feet wet as an international head coach as well. Cool. So, so Tamara Lopes, I believe, is handling that for the North Americans and Cayman Islands. Okay. Yeah. She picked great. a great place to go for her first shot. Yeah, I know. I know. It's a <laughs> great one. How bad could this be? Yeah. And I, uh, and then uh, she's also assistant coaching in Malta. So like, she's got the destination. Oh, like, she's like out. picking these off. Isn't she? <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's like Mongolia. Uh, I guess I'll go. Let me, let me swing through Malta and Cayman Islands on the way. <laughs> no, that's great. Tamara's awesome. She's, yeah. she's our treasurer. Uh, she does a ton. She's just an absolute boss of a person in life as well as in powerlifting. She's got world championships on her resume yeah, um, as a lifter as well. I believe world games. Yeah. Yeah. I believe so, she's a world games competitor. Yeah. So I'll have to get her on here and have her talk about her, her past uh, history as well. You know, she's, go fun, she's a funny one. Cause um, you know, she's quiet. So you don't, you know, you never hear anything about her. Yeah. But when you get to find out her backstory and her history, she's a go getter. Oh yeah. She's special. She, we, we're really lucky to have her on our yes. team in yes. power team America. Yes. Um, absolute boss of a person. Yep. Um, yeah, so that's super exciting um, stuff there. What, uh, let's rewind to this year, 2022. You had a big year from a coaching standpoint. So you started coaching, you, you coached, you head coached the NAPF team by yourself. This yes. is before we had this, uh, this uh, idea of sending all the uh, world team assistants as head coaches of right. their various right. Uh, right. age and equipment categories. Um, and then you also went to Masters Worlds in Canada, yep. right? And yep. then you also went to Open Worlds in Denmark, um, Open Equipped Worlds. So, uh, also did USVI's nationals. nationals, yep, nationals as well. Yeah, yeah. So you you've you've had a a, a lot a big year in 2022. Let's go through them real quick. I mean, how was Panama and NAPF and all that? Um, um yeah. Panama did a nice job for putting on their. I believe that was their first. Uh, so. North Americans. Yeah. And uh, the gentleman who, who ran that meet did a really nice meet there. Uh, yeah. the, the circumstances were pretty good. Normally we get down into those, um, those deep South American uh, countries down there. Oh my God, it's hot as hell when we get there. And yeah. air conditioning is not up, up to our standard of air conditioning. Yeah. And frankly, Panama was pretty good. Yeah. It was Sergio... I believe it was Sergio and Tibby were the two that were running right. it. Um, yep. Yeah, man, they, they they put on a good a good meet. Them two worked their asses off. Yeah, for sure. I can't remember the girl's name. I'm sorry, I can't remember her name. Who handled all the transportation for that meet? God bless her. Oh yeah. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. She handled it. That was a nightmare. <laughs> the logistics of getting. I don't think that woman them. slept for two weeks. <laughs> yeah. But tell us how many people were on the team roughly off to the top of your head. So that was one of my smaller teams. Uh, that one I had 50, 53, 54, 56, something like that. Somewhere in the 50s. Yeah, I've, I've had, I don't know how many, off the top of my head how many North American teams I've had. I believe, I believe that's my sixth or seventh one. And I've had teams as big as 121. Okay. Uh, and typically I've never had a staff for them. Uh, the biggest staff I ever had is three. Um, and it was usually myself, Zach Cooper and, and my wife. Yeah. And this time it was, uh, Janelle and, um, Cardill Triamonte and myself. Yeah. So yeah. that was pretty normal for us to just be the three of us to handle them big teams. Okay. Well, it was seemed like a shitload of work. Um, I mean, 50 lifters, People, that's one thing people don't realize when they think about these competitions, 50 lifters is a small team for the North yeah. Americans. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of eyeballs in powerlifting is only on the classic open worlds team. Right. And that's yeah. 16 lifters, Yeah, 16 and, lifters. And you think, Oh, you know, taking teams to these international comps is not that big of a deal. It's just 16. Well, 16 is a lot when you're dealing with itineraries. And I call travel. 16 lifters one day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, that's the thing. I think you did have 16 lifters in one day in Panama. 
So um, that's there's a lot that goes into these teams and the the classic open team and the and the open equipped team, they're small, only 16 lifters on each of those teams. But these other teams that we're talking about, the North American Championships, I mean, you've got sub juniors, juniors, open, masters, and you have all of those equipped and raw. And raw. So yeah. I mean, it's a full on mega worlds style like when they used yes. to do worlds like that all you know together yes. um and it fits all into a long like i don't think it was eight or eight or ten day type type of a situation and i'm not sure how many countries are still in the napf but i want to say there's 19 of us yeah yeah it's a good competition yeah. um i mean you know this year we pretty much got our ass kicked and you know we oh, saw yeah Canada came out strong. Uh, they sent big a big team. Uh, Honduras had a big team. Uh, Dominican Republic, you know, had a big. Oh, Dominican Republic, Panama, Costa Rica. Costa Rica is coming along. Yeah, Mexico. Canada was well represented down there. Uh, Gary, uh, who's the coach for them, did a really nice job down there. Canada, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was it was pretty interesting to see. Um, you know, Team USA and Canada. We were kind of you sharing the same warm-up platforms here and there and you know kind of yeah it was you can tell they have been the countries that had <clears throat> the the more international type of experience yes. the people the yeah, they weren't they weren't caught off guard at all no exactly no they knew what they were doing for sure um but yeah it was exciting it was fun yep and that's where we met and got to hang out and then just the whole team the whole squad yep. ls was there um so yeah it was a blast it was a fun one for ls sure. is funny man Oh yeah. Hilarious, huh? <laughs> I'm in a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Your shirts are here in the box so you can have them. Don't just nice. sneak them out of the box. Don't interrupt. <laughs> is this one of your lifters? So this is Dana. Dana, come here and step over here. Yeah. Behind me. Oh my God. So I know Dana. This is, this is one of our lifters going to, to Scottsdale with us in a couple of days. This is Dana Manning. <laughs> Hi Dana. Good to see you again. I'm so sorry to That's right. You ready to go? I am ready. Good. Yes, sir. You need Absolutely. some t-shirts. Yes. All right. They're in the box. Pick out your, pick your sizes. Okay. We so I had shirts made up for the team. They all got their names on their, on their shirts. That's cool. We just recorded the master's preview show last night and we mentioned Dana Manning's name on that. So make sure she subscribes to the podcast and listens. <laughs> <laughs> You're so supposed to subscribe uh, to the post uh, podcast now. I do. Yeah. Oh, she already does. <laughs> okay, good. Well, you're going to hear your name on the master's master's preview show so it'd be cool we got <clears throat> you're in a you're in a tight battle and uh you, you're gonna have fun you're gonna have to work is what he's telling you I'm yeah you're gonna you got a competition on your hands you could win you could be a national champion you could be headed to mongolia with jim so <laughs> you should see the paranoid look on her face all of a sudden <laughs> <laughs> or you can come to the cayman islands with tamra yep yep so. <laughs> what do we got next all right so um after that masters worlds in canada how'd you how'd you end up getting uh involved in that um that one was bill's team that's bill helmick's team and uh in the beginning we had janelle and i had signed up to be on usvi's team uh when we first came back so spoiler alert, people who don't know, <clears throat> Janelle competes for USVI. So you're a yes. house divided. She's a traitor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I went up to, to pretty much help Janelle uh, and do whatever Bill needed. Now, also from our gyms uh, is Steve Mann, who uh -huh. was competing. So I was there pretty much to help Steve and Janelle and, and whatever Bill needed me to do. And Bill and Big Mike were working together. They didn't need me for much. So my, my role in, in uh, Newfoundland was pretty small. I only, whoever was on M1s that day is who I was helping. Gotcha, gotcha. But tell us a little bit about it. How was the comp up there? Nice. It was, it was a good, you know, again, IPF has been getting better every year with their world championships and getting them closer to being the events that, that every lifter has dreamed of having. Um, yeah. They were, it was what we would have expected from them, but, but, but a little bit better. Yeah. The difference between that one and the one a month later in Denmark was light years apart on how much better it was. So how did Janelle do? Janelle won the world championship again. That was number two for her. All right. Uh, 
it was a good battle. Uh, you know, she really wasn't in danger of losing it anywhere unless she missed the lift someplace, but she tried to do. Uh, <laughs> I lost Janelle's suit. Oh, wow. So we go to the equipment checks and I check all of her stuff in. And, you know, it's always a bit of a hurry and a little chaotic when you're trying to get the stuff packed and get out of the way for the next person, right? Yeah. I left her suit behind, her squat suit behind. Whoa. <laughs> So she's getting warmed up and she's ready to put her suit on. She's digging through her bag, can't find her suit. And I hear them announcing about, hey, did somebody lose a suit? And I'm thinking to myself, what dumbass and leave your suit behind? <laughs> Karma. <laughs> I go running out and check it. Oh, yes, <laughs> that's hers. <laughs> wow. Thank God. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. If they wouldn't have called that, I would have been. I would have been deep dog doo doo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would she? Could she have one without it? Well, she had another squat suit that I think was actually a better suit. Okay. Um, it had far more reps in it. It was she was making depth in it better and making heavier weight in it. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't the newest suit, so she wanted the new suit. Yeah, yeah. That's how it goes. So, I, she would have been okay either way. I think she'd been better than the, than the old one, but she still won. She won. Steve Mann won. He he won best lifter too, I think, right? Yep. So that oh. contest, I uh, I coached four people that day, and in the the best lifter awards, they went one, two, three, four. Oh wow! Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, that's cool. So yeah. yeah, yeah, it's good to be in there in the trenches. So you man, you really got your feet wet in 2022, like big time, right? Like oh yeah, we dive right back in and all the way into the deep end. Yeah. And so then tell us then about Denmark. We already talked about how it was so spectacular, but how, what took you to Denmark? So again, Janelle, I'm riding Janelle's coattails. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure we say her name like at least 20 times. Well, least. on that, on, on, on the U.S. side of that, um, that's James Townsend's team. Yeah. And, you know, you, you, when you're a head coach for a team, we're all very good at not stepping on each other's toes. Yeah. Like that's James's team. I'm not doing anything unless James asked me to do it. Yeah. Um, I'm not interfering. So with that one, Janelle was for USBI. So I'm working side by side with James. We've got his lifter on the same platform with us. We're all working together, but I had nothing to do with, with USA stuff or just USBIs. Gotcha. Okay. And how'd Janelle do there? uh she got 11th she was seated 12th going in got 11th coming out or maybe she got, right. got 10th coming out i'm not sure now uh-huh but she's well, a master's she lifter competing in the she open ninth coming out because she made points she okay. made two points cool but she was an m1 49 years old against the best opens in the world yeah and frankly yeah. she had the best contest of the year on that day against those those that level of lifters that's cool. She rose to the challenge. Yep. She had a big squat, biggest bench, biggest deal of, the, of her, of the whole training year. That's amazing. That's perfect. That's where you want to have it on the biggest stage, right? Yeah. On the biggest stage. Yep. For sure. Yeah. And that, that I've heard a lot of feedback that, 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 uh, competition went off really well. Um, I think there's more meets coming there. I think there's more international competitions that are headed I to wouldn't be surprised because they, I've never seen a show that good. Mm -hmm. up until Sheffield and of course on Sheffield we only got to see from the TV side we don't know what it looked yeah. like from behind the scenes yeah and I've talked to Leah about it and she said it was spectacular yeah um, same warm-up room kind of situation that you're talking about yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I heard so they got yeah. their they're getting their act together man no it's it's fantastic all right so Let's then talk about this year's master's team um, and what it takes to get onto the team. So walk us through what are the qualifications? What are the criteria to make it onto the U S national teams? You know, the one headed to IPF worlds um, in Mongolia and the other one headed to the Cayman islands for the North American championships. So each of the teams is a little bit different on, on rules or on, on selection criteria. So I'm going to speak to, the master's world team. Yes. So the, on the master's side, you have to have gone to this year's nationals to be okay. first choice. Mm -hmm. So the winner of this year's national championship in your age group and weight class gets 
the option to go, well, is the automatic nominee to go to Worlds. Okay. If that person should, should choose to turn it down, uh, can't go for whatever reason, doesn't want to go to Mongolia, whatever, injured, whatever. They go to second place and then third place and then fourth place and so on and so forth. Okay. If we don't get somebody who has a high enough Carpino formula or I, IPL, uh, GL formula number to qualify to go, then we will look back at uh, 2022's U.S. representative to the World Championships or the NAPFs. Okay. So that's how that's going to work. Okay. Um, the I gotta tell you, like I think it's the women's M2s. Nearly everybody that went to nationals last year or in worlds or the NAPFs are all back again this year. This yeah, year. It's, it's like a repeat. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, I was just looking this up because, like I said, we did that masters preview show last night and um there's a, the number of returning reigning world champions that are going to be here in exactly. Scottsdale. The only one didn't come back. Yeah. So I think 13 reigning world champions will be in Scottsdale on the yeah. masters from the master. Wow. That, and that's just classic masters. Yeah. That's not equipped masters. We're talking just classic masters. There's 13 reigning world champs coming back. I know over the last two weeks, uh, <laughs> Bill and Tamir had asked me to put together a list of uh, possible selections if they we didn't get it from the Nationals this year. Okay. And it is down to a mere handful is all I have left for selection choices if it doesn't come from this year's Nationals. Uh-huh. It's the smallest pool I can remember to pull from. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So – the automatic to automatically punch your ticket, you got to win your weight class. Yes. Okay. And then I think from there it goes to, if for whatever reason that person doesn't accept, then it just goes to rank order by, by IPF good lift points. Right. Right. Okay. And, gotcha. and placing where they place the nationals. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's pretty straightforward. That should be pretty easy yeah. for people to figure out. And then, so if someone wins their weight class and let's say they say, okay, I'm, I'm declining going to mongolia do they then become the first choice for north americans i'm not too heavily involved in that this year i want to say yes but i'm not 100 percent certain on that okay because it says that you know um by the way this information is all on the website um if you go to the athletes tab and then national teams right. and right. then from there on the left there's a sidebar you can click classic and equip masters and all of our national teams are there so you can see the criteria for getting on one of these teams. Um, it says that the first 16 alternates um, for in each age division for both classic and equipped that don't make the world championship team will be selected for the North American team. Right. So, okay. So typically, it, it first place should be going to Worlds. Yes. Some of them this year, because Mongolia is, is – it's a hard trip to get to. It's 26 hours of travel time to get there. Yeah. If you had found a good flight, yeah. Um, some of them may choose to not do that. They may choose to go to Cayman Islands. First of all, it's Cayman Islands. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful when you get there, and the trip is much shorter and easier to do. So for sure, second place at nationals is going to have a good shot at getting a chance to go to Mongolia, and they should be thinking about trying to get to that second place position at nationals. If they're not going to win. Okay. So placing will be a big determinant of how, where you might yeah. end up here. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll bet as much as 50% of the team for worlds will come from second place at nationals. Okay. All right. So, and that's because a lot of first place finishers you think are going to turn it down. But they're going to deny Mongolia to go to Cayman Islands. Okay. Okay, cool. So they will have that option then of kind of like yes, you win your weight class, yep. you'll be able to choose. Yeah. All right. That's good. That clarifies things for people, you know, because uh, the masters will be, you know, they'll be wanting to know, make sure that when they, it, that'll be a big question. If I just, if I decline this, am I going to get the offer to go to North Americans? Cause right. that they wouldn't decline otherwise. You know, something else I'd like to cover there is yeah. uh, Dell certifications. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We're under very time, short time windows 
to put these teams together to get the preliminary nominations put in. And, you know, we offered, we put the first choice, uh, first chance offer out the first place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if they have a, you know, seven or 10 days to, to accept or deny that, we've lost seven to 10 days of getting to the second place person to get them ready. Yeah. So I would like, I would encourage everybody to go get their Adele certifications done so that that step is out of the way if they should get lucky enough to get that offering to, to go to the world team. Yeah. yeah. Even Cayman Islands. You know, that's an even shorter time window for that preliminary nomination. Yeah, because that one's coming up. Yeah. That, that was, was only super... days long. Exactly. But I would encourage everybody this week, if you don't have your Dell certification, get that thing done because we have to have that done before we can take you. And what is that for people who don't know? So it's, it's a certification you know, that you've taken a test that you know what the, what's expected of, of you for WADA. Okay. Take a long story short. Okay. okay That's what good. to expect of your drug testing. It's what to expect of, of yourself and, and your responsibilities. All right. So, yeah. And it takes, I mean, it, it's a lengthy test, right? It's oh, like six, it seven hours. It's, if you were good at it, you could do it in four or five hours. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. wasn't good at it. <laughs> so it might take like 10 hours. Yeah. I think it probably took me eight plus. Okay. So people out there who are thinking about getting on one of these teams, you're going to have to make a quick decision. You yep. got to have this done. Get it done now. Yes. Don't wait around. Hopefully with so many people that are returning from last year's world's teams and things like this, a lot of them will already have it done. Yes. Yes. Um, so certification and- is only good for two years. Okay, so so if you had it done in 2021, do it again. About doing it again. Yeah, yeah, because that's something you don't want to mess around and not have. No, you want it done. Yep. So it's a stupid right. reason to not make a team. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That would be a silly reason. Something totally within your control. So go do right. it. Right. Right. Um. All right. Well, that's everything for Masters, the Masters national teams. Unless there's anything else that you want to add onto that. I'm good. Okay. Then the last thing I just wanted to ask was just, you know, looking forward to Scottsdale. We're, we're a week out, uh, less than a week out. What are you looking forward to? You know, like, uh, for, uh, besides your own, these things are like family reunions to go to. I, so I can't yeah. wait to get back there. Uh, yeah. you know, I like to have dinner with everybody. I like to have breakfast with somebody different every morning. Yeah. I don't even have to go for the competition. I go for breakfast and dinner with everybody. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah that's, that's my favorite part, to be honest with you. Um, I'm looking forward to, we have a lot of, we have a lot of junior lifters on the team this year. Yeah. I don't normally have junior lifters. I'm almost always opens and masters. And so I'm excited to see these guys get to their first big meets and, and you see that, that reaction, that delight on them. Um, yeah, but they've done some local meets. They think they're, you know, they're the big shits. And then they walk in and everybody's a big shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's very humbling. Um, and frankly, I'm more excited about what happens for the next training year after this is done. Because mm-hmm. I don't think you ever, there's two big gains. When you first do your first national championship, that next year after that, you make such enormous gains. Um, I don't know. I think it's because, you know, it turns the lights on it. I was a big fish in a small fish bowl. Now, holy crap, there's big fish out there. Yeah. And then when you make your first world team, Mm -hmm. your first international team, I think there's a, another huge gain that comes after that just takes you to another level that you didn't know you had. So I'm excited for those kids for that. What happens for them for that first year after and I'm excited about the training cycle for myself for from here to Mongolia. Yeah. Uh, I've already started it. I'm already in that that mindset of, of where I'm going to be for Worlds. I've already got my numbers planned. I know what I'm going to hit. I've already said them out loud. I've already told everybody what I'm going to hit. Say them out loud. Say them out loud. We're going for 800 kilos, man. All right. 800 <laughs> kilos. Total. Anybody comes in less than that, they're going to get beat. Oh, Jim Brown wants all the smoke. If you're listening from around the world, if you can't total 800 kilos, might as well go home, huh? Yes. <laughs> I love it. That's, 
That's awesome. And um, I know when we did the juniors preview show, I noticed that Cole Sherg, um, one of the lifters that you coached up um, at high school nationals. Yes. Um, he was going against a stud in the name of James Kellerman, who just yep. won the bench press world championships in South Africa. Did he? And um, yeah, he won. Nice kid. I like him. He's a nice kid. Right. And, uh, yep. but um, he will not be in Scottsdale. So yep. Um, from what I've seen, Cole is nominated number one. Um, I think he's got a good, sh- he, he's going to. So I still believe James is going to make the world team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a big enough gap between what James did at high school and where sure or Cole sure was for high school, that that's going to be tough to overcome that this short of time of training. Plus Cole did join the track team on me. Oh, tell, yeah. uh, tell me about it until like three weeks in cardio uh-oh he's all of it no well he's throwing shot oh, okay <laughs> not much cardio okay but, thank god um, it took a little from his training okay i'm a little disappointed for him on that it took a little from his training i'm, I'm hoping he totals as good as he did it in high school nationals to be honest with you okay yeah oh, these sub juniors they make up so much you'd be surprised i'm sure he's gonna probably pr his total by 10 kilos but but i think uh, he's gonna out deadlift what he did in in national uh, high school yeah um, Squat's going to be maybe under, and I think his bench will be on, but I think his, his deadlift's going to carry him a little bit better. Cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, as long as he handles business and totals something around what he did at high school nationals, maybe a little more, he's yeah. going to walk away as a national champion. Well, you guys meet this Jacob Breckenridge. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about him. Yeah. What, so what I had this kid. <laughs> I had him for four weeks going to the Pennsylvania state championships on April 15th. So I had him from March 15th to April 15th. Mm-hmm. He's 17 years old at the time. He squatted five, 551 on April 15th, benched a 297, 292, something like that. Pulls a 568 or 562 deadlift, I think, something like that. Wow. Now, I only got from April 15th to June 2nd mm-hmm. for training for the second time. So I still have not got a mesocycle on this kid yet. Wow. He's going to squat 600 this time. Damn. What weight class is he in? Same one, 264. Okay. But it only weighs 250 pounds. He's going to bench 308, 314. And I think he'll deadlift in excess of 600. Wow, that's crazy. That's going to be exciting. Yeah, so I mean, he's making fifty pound jumps on me in each lift, <laughs> except for the bench. That's exciting, man. That's a total yeah. of nine weeks of training to do that. Wow, that's pump. Yeah. that's that's awesome, man. He turned eighteen um, a couple of days ago. Okay, so does that mean he's he's a junior then? Yeah, he's a junior. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, a sub junior. He's still a sub junior. Yeah, juniors are nineteen and up. Okay, that's right. God, I always these numbers I always get them mixed up. Okay, cool. So he is a sub junior. Yeah. Nice. So he's got a good shot then yeah. at winning and going to going to worlds or yeah. you know, something. Okay. Cool, man. Yeah. Is that the one you call snowball? Yeah. <laughs> nice. it took me three weeks to find out what his real name was. <laughs> that's Jacob Breckenridge. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Nick um, Schurz is gonna be something to watch. I think he will be. Um, you know, he's in the, the, the 105 class for the juniors. Um, I can't just think of that other young fellow's name, but that, that, that other guy that serves Anthony McNaughton. Yes. He's, yep. he's an animal. Oh yeah. Uh, but Nick is only 19. Uh, might, might've just turned 20. Not sure. Um, but I think next year he will be your junior world champion. All right, then yeah. Nick, you're yep. talking Nick. Nick yeah. Yep. Cool. I mean, how many lifters overall are you bringing from Brown's gym? What, by the way, this, this whole ending here, we're talking about the Brown's gym team. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we got 13 or 14 here this, this time. Yeah. That's cool. But man. Sierra George will be there. Um, you know, Dana, who you met just a couple minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, myself. There's eight going with us there. Yeah, I don't, I don't oh, know. Oh, we got I, Logan he- Hegarty and yeah. we got Aiden Brown. Um, Aiden next year will be will be a, a force. Uh-huh. He'll be a force. 
we just brought him up from like 180 pounds to, to 205 in the last couple last two months maybe wow uh, but he's just growing into his, his weight but i think it'll be 105 by the time i get him there next year yeah yeah well it's exciting i mean you you got a young squad like you said um you're bringing a big one yep. um they're all going to show out I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you doing your thing in the warm-up room coaching up all these kids uh, yep. they couldn't ask for a better coach coaching yep. crew really because well janelle will be there right i mean yep yep so, I mean, they got two of the best in the game behind them and um, they're going to learn a lot and they're going to come away inspired and be ready to throw down next year. I think next year will there'll be a, they're going to be something spectacular next year. Brown's gym is going to be a force. Yep. Yep. Cool. Well, I'm looking forward to it, man. Um, I think we'll go ahead and wrap this up now then. And uh, you're good. And um, yeah, but thank you to everyone out there who's listening to Power of the America podcast. This has been Jim Brown head coach of the or co-head coach with Bill Helmick of the Masters national teams. So, all right. Thank you. You're everybody in Scottsdale. Yep. See you in Scottsdale. All right. We're out. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Peace.